Hey everybody, it's Mark of Manlock Sings, and I'm finally back on the track. Um, yeah, everything is good, my son is smiling and happy and everything, but it's time consuming to have a child, and everybody that has one probably knows that. Uh, so since I've just jumped out of the shower to record the quick intro here, I have to hand over to Dan. Uh, Dan Rubin is an awesome photographer, product designer, de graphics designer, singer, I don't know what else, um, a lot, and we're gonna start a new series with him uh, at the beginning it's gonna be what's in my bag and yeah he's gonna explain what he takes on his travels since he's like constantly traveling around the globe so Dan your turn hi I'm Dan Rubin and this is what's in my camera bag this weekend Uh, I travel a lot, so the actual cameras that come with me and the actual bag that I use uh, depends on my trip and my requirements. But a lot of the time, uh, I will bring a mixture of things, pretty much all the time, a mixture of things. And I'll start with the bag, because most of the time when I travel, I use uh, a bag that I'm, I'm not sure I would have ever picked myself, although it's been such a good bag that I continue to use it. It's made by Incase and it's a bag that's meant for camera use. The back opens up entirely and has all sorts of padding inside it, which works really well. It's super comfortable, but it's also, you can see, it's really slim and narrow. It's not too deep, so it, it, it forces me to limit somewhat what I take. It means it can't get too heavy, even though it already is pretty heavy at some times. And it has a place for a laptop and some other cables and everything else. Um, but it never looks too big as well. So with all the flying that I do especially, I never get questioned even when it has a tripod on the side. No one even asks to weigh it. So the fact that it looks very compact helps a ton and that keeps me using it. So for most of my travels, it's this bag from In Case, and usually I'll also pack in my suitcase or one of my other duffel bags, uh, this small Bowery bag from Ona. Super, super fan of the finish and the bag because I don't really want to be walking around wherever I've traveled to with a backpack and all this heavy gear. So I'll do a basically a day bag where I load this up with just the few things I need or a few extra rolls of film, whatever else. Uh, sometimes, again, if it's a bigger project that I'm working on and this is too small, I have a Domke F2 that I also will travel with in the same way because it folds really flat, just fits in my suitcase empty and it's just a bag to use on location. So the rest of my gear, I guess I'll start with uh, uh, something that has become, as an analog photographer who travels, uh, an absolute necessity. Um, most people wouldn't necessarily think of this as a, as a piece of gear, but this Domkey film bag, this is the large one. They have three different sizes. Uh, but I've, I've got two of these large bags and one of the medium ones, but lately I've just been traveling with the large ones. It's a lead-lined film bag, and I put my unexposed film and my exposed film in it and even when I've got, uh, if I've got film loaded in like a film back that I can easily pack inside here as well, I'll tend to put that in for, for travels just so it's a little bit extra protected from, uh, from getting scanned at x-rays. Um, I, I try to ask for hand checks whenever I can but that doesn't always happen or you don't always have time if it's a, a quick international transfer and you've got to have it scanned between terminals. There are loads of reasons why you might have to have your film scanned. And even if I'm not using high, high ISO film, I still prefer now to have it all packed away. I've never had, knock on wood, any issues so far, even if it's not in, in one of these bags, but these bags are a, a godsend and they make me feel so much more uh, comfortable. So number one, actually, uh, item for security and comfort are these Domke bags. Um, as you can see uh, on this particular trip, I have a lot of cameras, right? And they just fit in to these two bags. Uh, it's amazing what you can what you can pack in. My medium format at the moment on this trip is uh, a Mamiya RZ67. Um, I've only been shooting with this since December, so I'm still kind of getting used to it. It's a it's a big, bulky, heavy camera to travel with, but I've traveled for years with a Pentax 67 and a handful of lenses for that. So you're not really talking too much difference in in weight and bulk, um, and it's it's worth it to have the 67 neg. Uh, and, uh, and to be shooting with an SLR. So I also recently added the Prism Finder, which is super heavy, uh, and I'm not sure I'll travel with it a lot. It's just with me on this trip uh, as a bit of an experiment. I love using it, but I'm also super comfortable with a waist level finder. Uh, so the weight uh, of it, I mean, on its own, it's, it's heavier than my M6 with a lens. 
uh, to give you an idea of how much that weighs. Not really practical. I have two backs that I uh, travel with for the Mamiya, um, and just the one lens, the, the 110, that's all I want at the minute. Um, might add one more lens in the future, but again, it would make it tough to, to travel with with all this other stuff that I like to bring. Um, I'll move across to the other end uh, very briefly here. I'm, I'm in the process of testing this wonderful Undo uh, 6x12 pinhole camera. It's a magnificent thing. I, I, it's one of the, the nicest objects I've ever owned in my life. Uh, I haven't had any of the film developed from it yet. Uh, maybe by the time you see this video, I might. So uh, hop on over to my Instagram and take a look, because if I have, I'll put it um, uh, up there somewhere. But it's, it's so far, it's been a joy to shoot with, and, uh, and it, it weighs nothing. Even though it takes up some space, physically, it weighs nothing. So it's super easy to put in any bag um, and, uh, and to carry around. And, uh, and I think I might end up traveling with, it, with this a whole lot more than I thought I would before I started testing it. Um, working, working this way on the camera front, um, my favorite little camera to date, uh, my Contax TIX. Uh, it's an APS camera, so that's a film that is not manufactured anymore. Uh, I've been buying loads of expired stock that's well stored, and um, uh, over here I've got a bunch of different Fujifilm stocks, 800 ISO and 200 ISO. Uh, I've also got some Kodak ones that I've uh, got in storage. Uh, it's just a fun pocket camera, and it's, it's the smallest camera for the quality that it gets. It's about a 24 millimeter negative, and when that's scanned properly, it's great. And this has been so much fun, honestly. Way more fun than the con any of the other Contax T's that are 35 millimeter. Can't quite explain why, but I adore it. And there's no excuse to not have it with me. Uh, on this particular project, I shoot a lot of instant film. This is not my camera. This is a camera that's on loan uh, at the minute, uh, the Lomo Instant Automat. Uh, it's a fun point and shoot, uh, and I love uh, uh, using the, uh, the Instax Mini film. So um, it's been fun to experiment with a different model of it. I own an Instax Mini, uh, the Mini 90, uh, the kind of retro looking black and silver uh, model. So um, uh, a lot of fun to shoot that and uh, fun to have temporarily at least. Uh, then in the center here, we've got my kind of ridiculous collection of Leicas on this trip. Uh, my, at the minute, my, my only practical uh, digital camera is the Leica Q. I used it to shoot my half of Koi Abound, the book I came out with a, a few years ago with Craig Maud. And I have an emotional attachment to it, which I can't say I've ever had for any other digital camera. It's, it's a joy to use. I don't use it much because I primarily shoot analog, but uh, it doesn't hurt to have it with me. It's nice to have a 28mm 1.7 lens that can shoot easily at 10,000 or 12,000 ISO. So if I need to shoot in the dark and I can't do that with any of my film, this is the thing that comes out. Uh, most of the time it stays in the bag otherwise. Uh, my favorite manual SLR for 35 millimeter, I think, with beyond a doubt, is the Leica Flex SL. Um, I've got the 50 mil Summicron on it and I don't think there's anything else needed. It's a great portrait lens, it's a great street lens. Uh, and the camera itself is a beast. Uh, just has a battery for the light meter. Everything else is fully manual. And uh, if you haven't, if you don't know anything about these cameras, read up on them. They they eventually became the Leica R series. The lenses are of the Leica Rs. And you have to be careful about the lens and body pairings with these. Uh, but I'll trust you to do your research on them. Um, it's a bit heavy. It's a beast. It's basically the the body equivalent of the M6 uh, in this magnesium kind of casing. But it's uh, it's worth bringing. Love it. Uh, then the M6, kind of classic thing, and a camera that uh, goes absolutely everywhere with me, no matter what else I'm packing, the M6 uh, is in there as well. Just with the 35mm, uh, I find actually a lot of the time going out and just shooting around the street, that having the M6 for 35mm, the slightly wider view for street shots, uh, works well for a rangefinder, and then the 50 for portrait work or more close-up work on an SLR, uh, I have the Leica Flex SL, and that's a wonderful combination. Makes me very happy. Uh, then we get over to um, uh, my motion camera, uh, which is this, is, this is an absolute joy to use. It's a, a brown uh, Nitso 561 Macro. I have a few different uh, models of Super 8 camera now, uh, but this is, was my first, and it's the one I've, I've really used um, since last year. Uh, it's an absolute beauty of a thing, uh, and I could just stare at this all day. I don't always film with it. I choose what I'm going to film very carefully, but um, 
uh, I find that it's worth having with me all the time and I'll have a couple of packs of film with me and sometimes I'll have it with me on a trip and never use it. Uh, but it's more about having it in case I want to use it uh, and it's, uh, it's totally worth the weight and the space for me. There are smaller, lighter ones you can get for sure, but um, I, I'm kind of in love with this uh, Dieter Rams uh, design. Uh, then uh, we've got a selection of film. I have a lot more film. I, as I said, I have two of these lead-lined bags, which don't fit in my camera bag. They actually fit. I have a separate duffel, so I, I will always carry with, uh, travel with two carry-ons and a suitcase. I know a lot of people don't like to check a bag. I'm completely happy with it. My clothes and my toiletries and everything else goes in my suitcase, and I don't worry about it. Uh, my camera gear and computer and uh, backup hard drives and my SSDs, everything else, and film goes in my two carry-ons. So my backpack carries all the cameras uh, and then my duffel bag carries hard drives, uh, two bags of film, Kindle, a couple of extra little bits and bobs. Um, and uh, I've, it's a bit much on the number of bags perhaps, but because I'm almost literally living on the road constantly, it's not actually that bad. It's pretty compact for the number of things that I'm bringing, the number of places that I'm going. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so this is just a little selection of the film I have. A lot of rest of it is out of camera. But uh, you, I, I love shooting Fuji and Kodak. Uh, I adore them both. It's uh, selection and choice and options, and they're right for different things. Mixture of 35 mil and, uh, and medium format for both. A little bit of Super 8 Ektachrome hiding here as well. Some expired film. PJ400 and, and old Tri-X, uh, and I'm excited to, to, to try this, this little Ektacolor Gold 1000, which I just picked up, and some Ektachrome over here as well. Um, so you can kind of see I'm, I, 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 like, I like having options. Again, I'll be on the road, at this point I've been on the road nearly a month in, in multiple cities and countries, so bringing options with me is a whole lot easier than worrying about buying film or other supplies on the road. Uh, so even though it means I have to carry more weight and have a little bit more on the number of bags, um, it means far less for me to think about. I just think about it when I pack it. Uh, one more thing that uh, comes in super handy all the time and that is easy to fit in my bags, uh, my Siconic light meter, spot meter and incident meter. Uh, I've, I've finally took the plunge and got this last year after using other meters, smaller meters, and this one is just so good that it never leaves my side. I use it for everything that doesn't have a built-in meter, and sometimes, and depending on the lighting conditions, I'll use it for cameras that do have a built-in meter. Uh, last thing I'm gonna show you here, last two things. Uh, I did mention, mention hard drives and SSDs. Um, this is an important part of my kit because my entire workflow is digital, even when I'm shooting analog. The, the result are scans that I work with, that my labs will email me, and especially living on the road, I need to have those, those scans because my negatives will live at the lab until I have a chance to pick them up and then decide what else to do with them, whether it's storage or rescanning particular negs, anything else. So these Samsung SSDs are magnificent. They weigh next to nothing. They're super fast. Uh, and these three are each one terabyte. And I've got a couple of uh, my original first ones, 500 terabytes, which I now use just as kind of extra storage uh, or a scratch disk. Uh, and the regular SSDs over here, the, the modern versions, uh, the newer versions, they're all modern, are, uh, are used for all of my images, digital and uh, film scans, and all of the video that I produce as well. And it's really nice to be able to just have it in such a compact little space. Fantastic to have with me. The last little bit, which is my uh, newest addition to my collection of travel hardware, is this Faisal travel tripod. Uh, carbon fiber um, weighs next to nothing, weighs even less without this uh, Acrotec head that I've added to it. I got both of these in January at b &H on a visit to New York and um, I, I adore it. I've had tripods for years. They've always been bigger tripods and not travel tripods. Even the carbon fiber one, I have another Faisal that I've had for three or four years, but it's heavy, heavier. Its biggest thing is that it's bulky. It'll hold a lot of weight but it's, it's not really conducive to strapping onto a backpack. It just sticks out too much because it's big. Um, it's fantastic, and again, carbon fiber doesn't weigh much, but this one is meant for travel. And this head from Acrotec, Acrotec's a US company, a family-owned friend of mine, uh, Greg Annandale, had a slightly larger version of this head, uh, that I, and I saw it years ago and just fell in love with it. It's one of the only ball heads that I've ever seen uh, that uh, 
doesn't have any lubrication. So it works based on tension alone, meaning that when you're traveling, you get dirt or anything else in it. You just have to take it apart, use some, some compressed air or, or just a, a wet cloth, let it dry, whatever, put it back together, totally fine. Uh, maintenance is super, super easy. It's also invertible, so you can use it in a couple of different ways for you know either a 360 head or you know you can make the head move around on the top of the ball if you mount it inverted. Um, and this is separate from the tripod, but it's absolutely fantastic. The company also makes uh, uh, plates that are either generic or custom. So I've got one of their generic plates, a hand-mounted one on the bottom of my undo here at the minute, but I can take this off, uh, this wonderful little red anodized uh, dial there. I can just screw that off and pop it on my Leica Flex or anything else or my Super 8, super easy. I've also got a plate, custom plate mounted uh, also from Acrotech, all these from Acrotech. Um, there are Swiss plates, but the company is Acrotech. This one's made for Leica M's, and um, and I love it. it. Still allows me to take the base on and off. I don't really mind that it's only a three-quarter plate. I, I initially was kind of going, eh, maybe not aesthetically pleasing, but honestly, it doesn't matter. And it means that I just have it on there. It doesn't add really any weight. And it means if I want to pop this on the tripod, I just do it. And I'm more likely to do that with the uh, with the M6 uh, and the 35mm, it can just be like a little 35mm landscape camera, which I won't really use the, the 54 in the same way. Uh, I've also got a custom plate on the Mamiya, which they also made by Acrotech, and it's great because uh, Mamiya has these two openings for pins in their, the base of all, all their cameras, which means that when you mount the tripod plate that's made for that, it won't rotate. There's absolutely no rotation. So for a bigger, heavier camera that creates a lot of its own torque, this is great because this tripod plate will always be perfectly aligned with the camera. And I use the RZ on a tripod a lot. It actually works super well because it's such a heavy camera and a lot of the time you're 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 working where well, I find I'm working even when I'm, I'm shooting at, at uh, 2.8 on this lens I I'm, I'm dealing with shutter speeds that are a 30th of a second or slower uh, if I'm working with just natural light like window light for portraits uh, and you mount that on a tripod you can do whatever you want you can still take a one second portrait and it's totally fine uh, so having this tripod especially with the RZ has completely changed the way that I shoot and it's why I've kind of invested in a handful of these tripod plates too. They've, um, they've allowed me to think of a, of a tripod as, uh, as something that's always available rather than something that I have to plan ahead for and it opens up an entirely new dimension of, of photography, basically lower light photography when you're working with natural light. And um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's what I have with me at the minute and it, uh, even though it, I'll swap them out every once in a while. A couple of months ago, I, um, I had uh, uh, I had an X-Pan uh, with me, and instead of the uh, the RZ, I had a Hasselblad 500cm, so that took up a little less space and a lot less weight, um, and allowed me to sneak in the X-Pan, but I also didn't have the, the Ondu. You know, the, there's a little bit of, of, of swapping that goes on um, with my standard travel gear, uh, but always there's medium format, and, uh, and 35 and the Super 8 and the, the, the Contax TIX, uh, sometimes instant, not always, um, sometimes different cameras that I'm messing around with, not always. Now, always the tripod and uh, the light meter, of course, and my bags. So I hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, fire them off in the comments uh, or uh, feel free to send them to me directly as well. Hope you've enjoyed it. So I hope you liked the new part, uh, I will add some new photographers every once in a while um, and hope that this is kind of interesting for you guys to see what other photographers take on the travels or, or have in their daily carry-on and, and stuff like that to bring somewhere. If you liked the video, thumbs up, if you didn't, thumbs down. Um, check out Dan's stuff, uh, his Instagram is linked below as always and give him some love and hope to see you next time, bye!